This is How's Your ePresence, and I am Mark Galvin, your host. This show is produced and sponsored by ePresence. ePresence is a social media agency that manages company, personal, and collegiate social media. We also offer consulting and other creative services. The website for ePresence is epresence.me. That's epresence.me because it's all about you. Today's episode is our news update. This is our quick 10-minute broadcast that highlights news in social media that will impact you, the business person, trying to leverage social media for an ROI. As always, joining me for the news update is our director of social media, Eric Welch. Eric, how are you? Hey, Mark. How are you? I'm good. I'm very good. So we're coming off a big night, a big Super Bowl night. Uh, It's fun to uh, always watch the Watch the marketing there, but I do have to admit I, I jumped through a lot of that and, and I, I just really watched the game. So I have to go back and watch some commercials. But you said there was one there was a commercial on uh, something we use all the time, uh, Teams. You thought they did a good job uh, dropping a good advertisement last night. Yeah, yeah. I noticed uh, that one. I mean, obviously there's a ton of ads and they're always a big deal for everyone to see. But that one did catch my eye mostly because that's something we use – daily yeah um but it did a good job of showcasing some of the some of the features that's that's offered there it was a good spot yeah we're generally impressed with teams it replaces slack and we have a subscription to office 365 and because of that teams comes with it and it's uh, the video conferencing piece is fantastic the ability to share content back and forth and text messages and and focus on different groups and tasks. So we have a podcast channel right there on Teams where we're able to share content about these podcasts, as a matter of fact. So we do definitely love Teams. So I'm glad to hear that they did that. I got to go and I do have it recorded, so I'll go back and check that out. So remember, folks, if you will, rate us on your podcast channel. Remember, we're on iTunes. And if you rate us there, it'll help us reach more people. We'd love that. You can also find us all over social media using ePresenceME, just like our website, except no dot. ePresenceME is our handle everywhere. So there's a, the thing in the news that we'd like to talk about today is that uh, December of 2016 is when Microsoft bought LinkedIn. So it's been a little while. Pretty amazing. That, that was four years ago. It's hard to believe. They have seen, Microsoft has seen double-digit growth in revenue from LinkedIn since then. LinkedIn was nece- was not necessarily generating a lot of revenue when Microsoft bought them, but they have figured out how to bring in more revenue. Now, this is fantastic because it means that they're doing a better job of helping us, their user, reach the people we want. And if you want to pay out, uh, pay a little dollar for uh, to reach more people, you can do that. So we are about to launch our own ad campaign on LinkedIn. And what we're going to do is we're going to share those, the results with you. We'll let you know what we do and how we do that. And we'll tell you how the, how many people we have reached and the success of those ads. So we think that that's worthwhile for all of you to hear. So stay tuned. We'll do that through our news update podcast. We'll keep that as a as an agenda item and share with you those successes. But you'll also note LinkedIn's doing well. They're making some money, which is great. We'd like for them to stick around a little longer. There's another thing we want to talk about. I want to shift gears and talk about Instagram because Instagram, as you know, you've seen these paid partners out there that are representing certain products. So you'll get an influencer like Eric. So Eric is an extremely popular guy on the, uh, on the Instagram. How many, you got five followers. How many folks do you have on Instagram? I'm up to six. Okay. That's cool. So his six people love what he shares. So he could have someone come to him and say, will you say something nice about us, represent our product, blah, blah, blah. And there is a, a link that we're going to put in the show notes, which shows the steps to this. What, what's interesting is if you do this and you are an influencer, you can go to your, your own Instagram account. And instead of showing the location of where a photograph uh, or some content came from, now it will say that you are a paid sponsor of a certain group. So that is good to be genuine, to share with your audience that you are representing the product. But hey, I think it's fantastic, Eric. When you have the local grocery store calling you and having you endorse them to your six subscribers, 
that is fantastic. I know you're making a couple of bucks off of that. More power to you. Keep that up. Yeah, it's a big boost to the to the income there. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got something you wanted to share when it comes to news, literally news. What what do you have? Yeah, I uh, came across an article. It was in uh, Social Media Today. Uh, Andrew Hutchinson is the author. Uh, this is based on a study by Pew Research and um, primarily just kind of digging into the numbers of fake news. Everyone's favorite topic, especially sure. when we're in an election year here. But um, without getting into the politics of it all, what was interesting to me was some of the some of the numbers here. Um, so according to this uh, this research, sixty eight percent of Americans get their news, or at least some of their news, from social media. Wow! And digging into that a little bit more, forty three percent of those get their news from Facebook. However, Facebook is among both Democrats and Republicans. Uh, they distrust the information in the news that they see on Facebook. They just don't trust it. They don't believe it. They don't trust it. And that's just, and they, but they keep going back for it. So that's fascinating. The, uh, the writer here, Andrew, his, his spin on it is really interesting in that it's with so much, it, what, the way he writes it with so many people distrusting the information they're receiving, they're still consuming it at a high rate. And that kind of lends into why we have so much confusion and disagreement and such a, you know, social media is so, so de divisive, um, you know, across everything, not just politics, pop culture, sports, everything. Um, so there's a lot of people getting their information yeah. from Facebook, whether or not they believe it or not. Uh, Different story, right? Yeah. Yeah. So this is fascinating to me. Why would someone continue to get news from a source they don't trust? I just don't get that. But it still does show the power of Facebook. Yeah. I don't trust I think, it, but I'm still going there. Exactly. And I think a lot of that is just people are creatures of habit. And, you know, you get on your, I've, I've caught myself doing that, going to whatever app I'll go to. I open up my little social media folder. I'll go to Instagram first, just out of habit. I might have, maybe right. I was, I was just there recently, but I'll, just out of habit. So people want to go to, they just go to Facebook out of habit. Maybe they have it set as their homepage and they scroll through, they check some updates from friends and then they'll see a couple of stories. And then maybe it's some of that seeps in to their, you know, some of that news seeps in a little bit. Um, but that, that's what I would chalk it up to is, is just creatures of habit. Yeah, and there is a lot, and this is, for, for those of you that are interested in topics like this, there's a lot of interesting things going on with Facebook where they're under attack from a lot of, there are different politicians that are attacking Facebook for, from a different angle for the content that Facebook presents, and they don't think that they should be the ones determining whether something's real or not, or fake or not. And, and I think the problem that they have is once they start determining whether something is true or not, it puts them in a position uh, to be questioned and, and maybe even question that they're, um, oh, what's that word? When you, when you don't allow something to be published, you're, I'm having a total brain cramp here. It is, it is the Sunday, it is the Monday after a Super Bowl Sunday. So oh. I have a, I, I'm allowed to lose my brain here a little bit but anyway the long and the short of it is they are they're under some some deep scrutiny and they're they're going to have to figure out how they manage that long term because this is not a good trend if you're managing that brand so if 60 percent of people say they don't trust it that will have an impact long term whether they're continuing to get that content from facebook or not i would urge you all to look at getting your new sort news from multiple sources. So you hear both sides. Uh, it's, it's always good to hear both sides of the fence. Well, good. Anything else you got from your, your camp there, Eric? No, that, that was the, the big news uh, for me. Um, and we are in good. a, yeah, we are in a political election year here coming up. So this stuff Absolutely. is just going to, it's going to ramp up and you just need to be very careful about where you're getting your information from. That's true. And you have to know that Facebook is not going to check whether the politician's ad that you see in your feed is real or not. They're not going to check it for its legitimacy. They don't believe that that's their job. That's your job. So 
definitely check that out and make sure that if you see something, don't just believe it because you want to believe it or disbelieve it because you don't want to believe it, but uh, do a little homework there. All right. Well, Eric, we are out of time. I do appreciate jumping on the line with you. I always like our, our chats. And for all of you listening, remember, you can find us at epresence.me. That's epresence.me because it's all about you.